The Battle of Leyte Gulf is considered to have been the largest naval battle of World War II and, by some criteria, a contender for the title, largest naval battle in history. With over 200,000 naval personnel involved, it was fought in waters near the Philippine islands of Leyte, Samar, and Luzon. From the 23rd to the 26th of October 1944, combined American and Australian forces fought the Imperial Japanese Navy as part of the invasion of Leyte. The battle aimed to isolate Japan from the countries it had occupied in Southeast Asia, which were a vital source of industrial and oil supplies. By the time of the battle, Japan had fewer capital ships. In other words, aircraft carriers and battleships left than the Allied forces had total aircraft carriers. Underscoring the disparity in force strength at this point in the war. Regardless, the IJN mobilized nearly all of its remaining major naval vessels in an attempt to defeat the Allied invasion. It was repulsed by the U.S. Navy's 3rd and 7th fleets. The battle consisted of four main separate engagements. The Battle of the Sibuyan Sea. The Battle of Surigao Strait. The Battle off Cape Engenyo, and the Battle off Samar. This was the first battle in which Japanese aircraft carried out organized kamikaze attacks. And the last naval battle between battleships in history. The Japanese Navy suffered heavy losses and never sailed in comparable force thereafter. Stranded for lack of fuel in their bases for the rest of the war, and were therefore unable to effect the successful Allied invasion of Leyte. I'm Hunter from Upscaled Studio. Let's dive right in. The Japanese had been waiting long for the Allies to get out on a limb and cut off that limb. From the north, the south and the west, the Imperial Japanese forces converge with three powerful battle groups to perform the surgery at Leyte Gulf. The entirety remaining naval strength of Japan is mustered for one final supreme battle. train their crew to identify United States battleships, such as the Maryland-class battleship and Oklahoma-class. Three days after the Allied landings at Leyte, the Americans discover part of the converging Japanese Navy a little after midnight on 23 October. The captain makes visual contact about 30,000 yards away. The pair moved quickly in pursuit of the ships. Several hours passed as the subs try and gain a position on Kurita's formation. At 5.24 am, Darter fires a salvo of six torpedoes, at least four of them hit Kurita's flagship, the heavy cruiser Atago. Ten minutes later, Darter makes two hits on Atago's sister ship, the Takao. Both ships quickly sink beneath the waves. The Atago sinks so quickly, that Kurita was forced to swim for his life. On October 24, the submarines continue the pursuit, but the darter runs aground on the Bombay Shoal. The crew abandoned the sub and is rescued by the Dace. Then they send the enemy's coordinates and speed to command. Darter is lost but the Americans are alerted. Intelligence from the subs are analyzed above the flagship. The third fleet prepare their moves in what is about to become the greatest naval battle in history. Halsey sends out his patrol planes to pinpoint the enemy. On October 24, Halsley prepared his forces to engage. Halsey's scouts find the Japanese Central Force in the Sibuyan Sea heading east to the San Bernardino Strait. 
The Japanese force is planning to head through the strait and then set a southerly course to Leyte. This will soon become a fatal error for the Japanese. flagship sends the order to all U.S. carriers to strike the unsuspecting Japanese force. The battle group consisted of one large carrier, the USS Interpid and two light carriers. The Japanese at this time do not have any way to counter the U.S. attack planes directly in air-to-air -air dogfights. Their naval air power supremacy that stroke the crippling blow to the naval base at Pearl Harbor has but all been destroyed in the subsequent battles. The ships themselves became floating fortresses of steel in a hope that their anti-aircraft guns alone could hold off the Americans. The sailors prepared to put up a wall of fire on the U.S. strike force. Planes formed the Interpid and Cabot of Borgen's group attack, scoring hits on the Nagato, Yamaga, and Musashi. Six attacks concentrate on the 64,000-ton battleship Musashi. 21 torpedoes find their mark. The ship was struck by at least 17 bombs and 19 torpedoes. The Musashi is the first ship to be sunk entirely by aircraft. The Japanese forces retreat, wounded but not destroyed. Eight sixteen. In the meantime, the Japanese southern force, in battle array and all boilers lighted off, rips into the sea towards the Surigao Strait, leading directly toward the Leyte Gulf in the South Sea. Japanese battleships, cruisers, destroyers lunge through the narrow waters, hoping to link up with the central force and in a twin attack destroy the American forces. But the jaws of an American trap are open. American sailors already alerted of the Japanese presence, race to put a stop in the bottleneck of the Surigao Strait. Admiral Thomas Kincaid sends PT boats, destroyers, cruisers and battleships. American and Australian forces set up a dam in the strait. Their positions are taken along the strait. PT boats are patrolling the southern end of the strait, using their advantage of speed and maneuverability against heavily armored ships. In the form of the battle line, they are ready as first contact in the battle.
Behind the PT patrols, the destroyers are set up. Behind the destroyers the cruisers are ready, and behind the cruisers, the battleships. All hands are quiet and tense before the battle, waiting for the first sign of the enemy. The Japanese hurl themselves headlong into the dark, into the American trap. At midnight, October 24, Japanese detects the American forces. Searchlights then light up the dark night. The Battle of Surigao Strait begins. The PT sailors attack with torpedoes to throw the Japanese forces off. The PT boats have done their job in locating the enemy and attacking them. The destroyers, cruisers and battleships are then read in position. Ready at their battle stations to continue the trap. The battleships that had been damaged at Pearl Harbor had been repaired and were now fighting in this battle. The USS Tennessee, USS California, and USS West Virginia, USS Maryland. The old battleships take their vengeance on the Japanese. After the battle, the debris from the battle litters Surigao Strait. More than 5,000 Japanese sailors are either missing, wounded or dead. The survivors who are left floating on the debris refuse to be rescued. The Japanese southern force is destroyed. There is not time for celebrating. To the north, the San Bernardino Strait is still unguarded in an open waterway to Leyte Gulf. The Japanese Central Group is cruising through here at 20 knots. This is the force that turned back from the submarine attack. Only light escort carriers and destroyers protect this approach. The steaming Japanese force is discovered by surprise from search planes of the escort carriers. Should these 22 ships break through, they will jeopardize the Leyte landings. Orders go out to the thin line of destroyers, attack, hit the cruisers and block the battleships. The Japanese force includes the largest battleship ever built, the Yamato and its massive 18-inch guns. The Yamato opens fire on the US Navy. Barrage after barrage startled the carriers, protected only by the intrepid destroyers.
The destroyers lay a screen of smoke between them and the carriers and then move in to deploy a torpedo attack. Every plane that can get off the carrier join the attack. These pilots are trained for ground attacks, but they hit the Japanese ships with that they can and all they have. The Japanese keeps pounding at the escorts and destroyers. But the reckless American attack continues. Suddenly, the Japanese make an incredible decision. They fire a salvo, and break off the fight. They turn back, this time for good. Five American ships, Gambier Bay, Street Lu, Johnston, Hull, Roberts, sunk with 2,800 casualties. Meanwhile in the north off Cape Inganya, the third Japanese force is located. The answer to question the Americans have been asking up until now, where are the carriers? The carriers and its escorts are the final threat to Leyte Gulf. The task of the northern force is suicidal. The original mission of this force was to decoy the American ships out of Leyte while the other groups drive the Americans off of Leyte. The Japanese are hopelessly outclassed. The Admiral admits, we will be sunk. That is our mission. Radio silence is broken to deliver positions. The dummy messages are intercepted. Admiral Hasley is left with a decision, should he stay at Leyte, or sink the carriers? Regarding his mission to be offensive rather than defensive, he orders the 3rd Fleet North. The first strike consists of 55 torpedo planes, 60 fighters and 65 dive bombers. The Japanese maneuver to receive the assault with heavy anti-aircraft fire.
Japanese land-based bombers set course to attack Admiral Hasley's ships. Few Japanese attackers get through, but a single bomber with a single bomb finds its mark. The light carrier Princeton is hit. The crew and other ships try desperately to put out the fires and prevent an internal explosion. The Japanese decoy works, but their force is futile, all three of their forces were broken. In four days the Japanese suffered 12,500 casualties, one fleet carrier, three light carriers, three battleships, ten cruisers, nine destroyers and about 300 planes are lost. In an instant the Japanese cease becoming a naval power. That dream is over. The once magnificent imperial fleet is no more. It dies in Leyte Gulf. In total, the U.S. suffers 3,000 casualties, one light carrier, two escort carriers, two destroyers, one destroyer escort sunk, 200-plus planes are lost. Fleets are made by nations and battles are won by men. When battle is done, the fighting young sleep in victory. If you liked what you saw, smash the like button and hit subscribe with notifications. This is Hunter from Upscaled Studio, signing off.